Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Loving Little Learners. So today I wanted to show you guys this video to just kind of go through what I plan to do to help support my students as we make our way through our math curriculum. I teach kindergarten and most of the things that we teach that have to do with math are accompanied with manipulatives and hands-on activities to help support our students' learning. So since we are teaching in remote learning modes, um, we don't have the availability to give our students these resources that we typically would to help them understand these abstract concepts. So what I have been doing is trying to find all of the best manipulatives that are available on the internet and kind of compile them into one place so that I have them for both my teaching um, and for my students to use as a resource. So I have been using these manipulatives as I share my screen on Google Meet. Um, and then I'm also making these available for my students to use as they do their homework and um, different assignments and practice along with me. So whether you're teaching completely virtually or if you're hybrid or just completely in the classroom, virtual manipulatives are still the way to go right now during this time because even if you're in person, you don't want to share um, actual manipulatives, you don't want students sharing resources, and then you also don't wanna have to worry about disinfecting things. Um, so what you can do is just have this available for your students to access on their own um, devices and they can follow along as you're teaching in person, or um, they can have these as a resource as they're doing their homework virtually. Um, so there's tons of different ways that you can use something like this, this um, Bitmoji manipulatives room, or um, you guys can use it for whatever you need because the resources that are available range from very basic to pretty complex, depending on whatever age you teach or whatever grade you teach and what you need. For instance, we are learning um, to use 10 frames. So I can just simply click here and open up a 10 frame resource. I can go through some guided practice with my students. I can scaffold through, or I can have them complete an activity on their own using this, um, this resource and I can have them take a picture of what they did, a screenshot and share it with me, or they can just use it to practice um, as if they would when we were typically in class. So what's really cool about this is I can just move these into place really easily, super quick, super easy to use. And then what's also really cool is that there's this feature to write. So right now we're learning 10 frames, but we're going to start within the next couple of weeks learning addition. So I can have my students create a um, an equation that just says five plus one equals six, and then write it right here in the same place. So you have both the manipulatives and you also have the ability to write directly on the platform. So this is really cool. This is just one of the many resources that are available. Um, as you can see, there's five different computers here, and these are the main websites where you can access all of these different resources that I have found most valuable. Um, there's tons of different things that you guys can see on there. If One of my favorites is Toy Theater here, and um, they have tons and tons of things that you can use, ranging from what a kindergartner may need as a resource, to one of the upper grades. Um, there's fractions, multiplications there. You're using geometric shapes, graphing, things like that, money. Um, and you can also go and see what type of manipulative you want to use by subject area. I also really like the teacher tools um, because there's everything that you would need for a student and a teacher. And like I said, you can just share your screen with your students and kind of go through the process um, of solving an equation with one of these resources, or you can just have your students access it on their own. Another one that I really like for um, higher grades are is this one called Polypad. And I really like it because it has just a lot of geometric um, shapes and figures. It also has these fraction bars. 
So what I would do is just go in, create some type of picture. And um, what I tend to do a lot during math or, or is to have a math talk. Um, and math talks are just kind of where you're able to share out what you're thinking, give each other ideas, point out what you notice. So um, I do this activity called notice and wonder. So there's also a pen tool here and you can write in. So I can say notice. And then I can say wonder on this side. And sorry, my handwriting's so bad, I'm on a laptop. <laughs> so I would go ahead and show my students a screen, whether I'm virtual or in person. And I can have this on my smart board or I can just be sharing this screen with my students and then have them go through. What do you notice about this without telling them anything at all? What do you notice about what I'm showing you here? And then you can even point to the things that they're pointing out, circle, the different items that they're pointing out, annotate right here on this um, board, and then write down the text of what they're saying here. So what they notice, and then you can talk about what they wonder, and then stop and kind of go through what you were thinking when you made this, um, this creation. And then again, refer back to what you notice and what you wonder, and see if any of those answers were um, solved, or you see if they have even more questions now that you've kind of discussed it a little bit. So you can do these activities, notice and wonder and things like that with um, just about anything, um, with just counting or number recognition or addition sentences, things like that, um, where you can have the ability to have these math talks that are really valuable to having the students really um, make that jump from abstract to really understanding the concepts that you're teaching um, during this instruction. So those are all of the really cool resources that I have found, and I've just compiled them into one room. Um, so it's easy, easily accessible from for either the teacher or for your students. And then I've put the resources that I find most valuable here on the bookshelf um, so that your students don't have to even navigate through the different websites. They can just simply click on whatever it is that they want to use at the time and um, use it directly from there, just like clicking like this. So bar graphs, charts, things like that, um, whatever you want to make, it's all here in this one area. And you guys can use it for tons and tons of different things. So I'll link this resource in the description box below. Um, I've also added in how you would change out my Bitmoji and then also how you would share the resource with your students. You don't want your students to be able to move things around like that. So what you do, you go through a specific process to publish um, a room like this to the web so that your students aren't able to move anything. Um, but they are able to go ahead and click on anything. So I can't move anything here, but I'm still able to click on the different resources and open them up and use them then. So that is how I plan on supporting my students as we make our way through more complex concepts um, like addition and subtraction and things that I would rely heavily on manipulatives for. Um, while we are in virtual modes, and then even when we go back into hybrid or in-person teaching, um, where I don't want to take that risk of sharing resources and disinfecting things daily, where I can still utilize these virtual resources to help um, support my students as we're learning. So if you have any other virtual resources that you like, or manipulatives that you like, please add them in the comment section below so that we can all share and use these. Like I said, I'm going to put this specific room in the description box as well, so you guys can access it there if you would like. Um, and let me know how it's going if you do choose to use this or if you have been using virtual resources in your, in your instruction 
or with your students. You guys can share this on Google Classroom. You can share it on Seesaw. Whatever platform you are using as a resource for your students, you can list it under materials on Google Classroom. Um, and just have it there for them to use. Something that I think is really cool is that um, you guys can be going through your instruction as normal in, in class and have your students work through as you're teaching. Um, so kind of like a guided practice. So I think that there's just tons of ways to use something like this, no matter which um, mode you're teaching in so that you're able to really support your students. I know this year is harder for a lot of us um, than we're used to as far as things like this go, and especially when it comes to math, where it's a it's very hands-on. Um, so really coming up with resources and ways to help support one another and our students is key to um, seeing the success that we want throughout this year. So again, leave a comment in the description box if you have any ideas. Um, check out the check out the link if you do want this and then go ahead and um, press that subscribe button to get more videos from my channel, Loving Little Learners. Thank you for watching and I hope you stay tuned for the next video.